Most teams waste hours trying to pull manual data from different sources instead of using that time to figure out how to turn data into ways that can drive more revenue for your organization. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to get started with Fivetran in 2025 and how to use a data pipeline to turn your data into insights and actionable next steps. After working with more than 100 organizations, I've seen how the right data pipeline can change everything. I am ready here with my favorite cup. So let's jump right into the video. Let's start by looking at the most important decisions you will make when setting up Fivetran. We have to start by looking at connectors. Now the Fivetran product really talks about two concepts, connections and destinations. So we're gonna look at connections first. So we have about 730 connectors available to us. There's quite a bit of options. The most popular ones will typically be towards the top, Facebook ads, Google ads, Google Analytics 4, which is the one that we will be using today. But there's a lot here, right? And there's different ways to sort in. You really just want to make sure that the connectors you're looking for are available here. Fiverr does have an option to build your own connectors if they're not available, besides requesting that, which is just asking them to build it. So there is some code you can write to do this. But ideally, if they're available, out of the box, that's honestly the best option as they will be maintained by the five trend team. They tend to be highly reliable and reliability is really the name of the game when it comes to data pipelines. Now let's look at one connector and the one we will be using for our example today, which is Google Analytics 4. So if you click more info, you do get the entire documentation of this specific connector. You can see that it tells us some of the specific features of the connector. Down here, it gives us some idea of what's going to be brought in in terms of schema or events or, or data and a few other details that may be important depending on what we want from this connector. So being familiar with the FYI, some of the limitations on connectors, it's always important. But let's look at the setup. Every connector is different. Some connectors will ask you for some kind of API key, secret keys, maybe JSON files. In this case, actually, you can see that Google Analytics 4 is actually asking for an SSO connection. That is, we're going to authorize it with a Google account. Generally, Google products tend to be like this. It's kind of the easiest way. You just take an account that has admin permissions and you give that account to Fivetran and then that will allow the connection between Fivetran and that specific connector. So let me go through this using my Google account. So we're back. I went to the SSO with my Google account. Now I get some further options, which again will vary depending on the connector. So we have how much data we want. We actually want to keep this a little light because I want this to sync quicker for this video. Basically, you can go up to 24 months. Or actually, you can actually go up to all time. The more data you have, of course, the longer the initial sync will take. The ongoing syncs will simply vary depending on the frequency. If you set it up to sync every 24 hours, it's only going to sync, of course, 24 hours worth of data. But the initial sync tends to be the longest one. So let's do three months the fastest option and then we're gonna either sync all the accounts that are available to this google account or specific accounts which is actually what i want and i specifically want my website account so i chose one account i chose one property now it kind of tells us that this is actually going to bring 50 pre-built reports by default and again if you want to go more we go back to the documentation we were just at and it simply tells you what are the reports that this is actually pulling for you out of the box you can see it's typical kind of google analytics data the user acquisition data the source data the medium data, the campaign data, and a bunch of other ones. If you are working with this by yourself, you kind of have to figure all of this out and kind of build the schemas for you. But Fivetran does it for you, which is quite handy. If you do want something custom, of course, you have the option here. And you can then see the different data points that Google Analytics 4 offers and then just simply select them into some kind of schema. Again, this varies depending from connector to connector. Just give me a sense that you can take either templates that are pre-built or you can build your own interacting with that API depending on how Fivetran has made that integration. So I really like this concept where you get stuff pre-built, you can get started quickly. And if you want flexibility, if you want something more advanced, you also have the option of doing that. To me, I think this is the best of both worlds. So I'm just gonna take the pre-built reports. I don't need anything fancy for our example here. There's an option to validate custom reports just to make sure that the way you build the schema makes sense. We're not using that, so we are skipping that. So now we can save and test. So it simply runs through just some basic tests on this connector. Since we use the SSO, this is actually quite fast because we already did the authentication. If you actually put an API key or a JSON file, then Fivetran just simply has to run through those, make sure that everything else authenticates as expected. So we are good. 
but we have our first connector. You can see here that the sync frequency will be every six hours. Some other data here that we don't have just yet, especially around how the data syncs, any errors, right? We have the schema here. This is what's going to get brought into our destination, which we're going to see in a second. Any usage in terms of the monthly active rows, which aligns with pricing. And of course, the same setup that we saw before with a couple new options will be available here, especially around notifications. So that being said, let's look at pricing next before we even get going with making this data flow somewhere. So Fiverr has multiple plans, like any normal SaaS company. We do have a free plan that has half a million monthly active rows. Monthly active rows just simply means the number of rows that are being passed through from the connector to the destination. Typically, the initial syncs don't count for your process, and, and they typically happen during the free trial, which is kind of like this a bit of a special period. So you're really just looking at the ongoing new updates from the connector to the destination. I always say that this is actually a little bit tricky to estimate. You know, there's actually some pricing estimators here, which we can look at together. You can see that it will take our connector, Google Analytics 4, and it will kind of give you distributions of how much data, how many monthly active roles get passed on on some kind of frequency, depending on your company's size here. So you can see that it sort of changes what this is and tells you that, you know, the median usage is about 200,000 monthly active roles from Google Analytics 4 for a company of this size. And of course, from here, you could simply add other connectors. For example, you may want to bring in something like Facebook ads, right? And same thing, you know, you have one Facebook account connected. It tells you the usage. Maybe you'll take this one. Let's actually put whatever this was, 150,000. And it starts to build the price in here on the far right. So you can do this if you want to get a, a rough ballpark. Honestly, I always find it much more helpful to pull in the actual connectors during the free trial period. If you have, let's say, 10 ad platforms you want to bring in, maybe you bring in one or two, you let it run through the initial sync, and then you kind of get a gauge as to what the monthly active rows might be. And Fiverr will have much better estimates once you actually do this. Now, in terms of the, the pricing plans themselves, you can see here that the sync amount changes once you get to the paid plans. You have access to different connectors, DBT for being able to maintain things. There's uh, models, which may be helpful, and a few other details. But generally, the core of the Fiverr product will be available as soon as from the first paid plan and onwards. And it really comes down to just simply how many rows you are pulling in. Now, choosing the right sources and only sync the data that you need, because remember, it's much better to have less data than to have too much data and be overwhelmed, will determine how many insights you get once we get to the end of this process. Now, we have one data source ready, or in your case, if you're following along, you may have multiple data sources ready. Now you need the right home for them. And this decision is also critical, especially when it comes time to building models and actually trying to extract insights from your data. Now let's continue by looking at destinations, the second half of our process here. Now I do have a warehouse destination here from BigQuery. I tend to use a lot of BigQuery in my own work, but there are other options. Let's go look at them together. You can see there's 37 different destinations here. They are pretty standard data warehouses or some kind of database. The most popular ones will be here. BigQuery, Redshift, Databricks, Snowflake, and you may have other ones like Postgres, some Azure related stuff. I do have some guidelines for choosing a destination. Generally, the volume of data will determine if you go with a data warehouse or just a database. Generally, data warehouses is the best option no matter what because you can grow with it. But just think about that. The second uh, depends to your ecosystem. If you're very heavy in the AWS system, then going with Redshift makes a lot of sense. Likewise, if you use a lot of Google Cloud, going with BigQuery, it's just simply logical. The exception here is if you have a bit of an outdated or unusual ecosystem. I once worked with a company that they were doing a lot of work in Azure and Azure has data warehouses. In fact, I think they're here down here, uh, like the SQL database, maybe Synapse is here. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, Azure Synapse is here. But sometimes the Azure stuff is not as compatible, doesn't play as nice. So they end up going with BigQuery just for simplicity. The third, related to the last point, is really trying to stick with something modern and popular. So when I think about popular data warehouses, you know, there's like four or five names that come to mind, right? The Redshift, the Databricks, Snowflake, BigQuery, maybe a couple other ones. If you take any of those popular ones, then you're likely to have a much easier easier time because there'll be lots of integrations that can pull data into those popular data warehouses. And there's lots of integrations that can pull data out the data warehouse. If you're in doubt, just stick with one of the most popular options. Don't complicate your life. So I have a warehouse BigQuery, but I want to show you something from scratch so you see the whole process. Let me go find, let me search instead. Oh, right here, I am missing it. Here we go. So we're going to call this BigQuery because I have no imagination. Okay, so I have my project ID. 
Uh, I'm gonna use the SaaS deployment. We're gonna use all the five turns cloud. There's a hybrid deployment if you want a higher security. Again, if you need this, you'll likely know the different details of the deployment agents. SaaS is the easiest and the fastest. Then we need a service account. Again, this is a little BigQuery specific. So I do have a service account. I'm actually not gonna use this one. And we need a JSON. Let me get that. The data location is US by default. There's a few other options here. If you wanna use the GCP service perimeter. I'm actually not sure what this is. If you know what this is, actually post in the comments. And there's a few other options. Generally, if you're unsure, just simply go with the default time zone. We don't want to shift our UTC time. Great. So we are good to go. So let's do a save and a test. So it's going to take our project ID. It's going to take our service account JSON file that we copy into. And it's going to make sure that everything is as expected, that you have all the right user permissions and the file trend will be able to flow data into this destination. Great. So everything passed. Congrats. Now choosing the right destination is what's going to make your data easy available for building models, extracting insights, replication, and simply getting the data where you want it to go. If you want help to ensure you're collecting the right data, get in touch. I help companies build awesome data stacks and of course, data pipelines that make everything we're covering here a breeze. So look for a link here in the top right of the video. If that's not for you, then let's continue on to the rest of the video. Now here's a step that many teams skip and it can actually be the difference between useful data and overwhelming data. Fivetran has a concept called transformations. So if we go here, we can actually run some transformations on our data as it flows from a connection to a destination. They also offer quick start data models which I want to show you those. So for example, we have a bunch of models here, like the, there's the ad reporting model, which I really like. So it takes ad platforms like Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, and it'll simply transform it into a standard format for how to report on impressions, clicks, cost data. If you don't use this, you kind of have to do the same thing in your own data warehouse, whether BigQuery or not. But by taking advantage of the transformations in Fivetran, you can do this quicker out of the box and you can start to analyze data faster. If you're not sure on the best practices for how to structure your data, highly recommend you actually check out the medallion architecture. This is an article by Databricks. If you Google this, you'll find something similar. But effectively, you have three layers. You have the raw data, which Fivetran will give you. It'll build all the tables and views in whatever data warehouse you set up. You have the silver layer where you start to clean the data. For example, that ad reporting model would technically count as a silver layer. And then you have the gold layer where you take whatever you need and build a view just for reporting or just to connect to a BI tool like Looker Data Studio and so forth. Thinking about transformations now means that you don't have to worry about how you actually use your data once it is inside a data warehouse. And for some engineering teams, their entire role or scope is just to get the data into the data warehouse. And then from there, it's your problem. So you really want to think about transformations and what are the best ways and perhaps the fastest way Ways to start to clean that data so you can start to report on it and use it for insights. We are now ready for the moment we have all been waiting for. We can connect our connections to our destinations. Now, I did do this beforehand. Typically, when you actually go through the five time process, when you set up a source, a connection, it will then ask you for a destination right away and it will then start what's called the initial sync. I kind of broke it apart a little bit for the video, which makes it a little awkward, but Google Analytics 4 is connected here. You can see at the very top with our BigQuery destination. And if you add a new connection, then it typically just asks you if you want to use your existing destination, which most of the case you do. Now it will go through an initial sync. We can see here actually that as I connected it, there were some connection warnings. Then Fivetran rescheduled the historical sync for about a couple minutes after, and then it finished successfully the historical sync. This is what's amazing about tools like Fivetran. It will simply take data for you or make the connections. And if there are any errors, it will work through the errors on its own. It will deal with timeouts. It will deal with schema changes. So that is the whole value of a tool like Fivetran. You can not think too much about many of these issues that will 100% occur as you deal with the wide range of API connectors out there. Now, let's go see this data in BigQuery. So if we hop over, we can see that there's, there's a new table here, a new data set called Google Analytics 4. If we open it, here are the 50 or so pre-built reports we saw when we connected the source. If you have any custom reports, they will appear there. And if you look at some reports, I don't know, let's look at the events report. Let's see what we got this. We, of course, have a bunch of columns, depending on what Fivetran brings. We have about 460 rows, not a lot of data in this Google Analytics account. And if we run it, we get our data and we are ready to start breaking this apart, building models, syncing it to wherever we want it to go. And it all happens in just a few minutes. And just like that, you've gone from having your data scattered in multiple places to living in a single home, which then allows you to use it to do what you're actually paid to do, which is drive revenue, run better campaigns, improve your
your product or whatever else falls under your job description. And now setting up five trend is just the first step. If you still find you're struggling to turn your data into actionable insights, then check out the next video. It covers the seven reasons why organizations don't get enough value out of their data. And most of them are actually easier to fix than you might think. So watch this video. My name is Ruben Ugarte, and I'll see you in the next video.